Okay, so here's a session um, to help you get started searching for academic sources. Um, in the past sessions and workshops that we've done, we've talked a little bit about actually getting started uh, working with a topic or an idea for a topic and how to kind of take that idea and expand on it and sort of build out um, into different areas that are associated with that topic to give us some options for how to maneuver as we kind of move along in our project uh, with the goal of eventually having a, a specific topic that we're trying to gather information about, okay? Um, so in, in the past uh, sessions, we were looking mostly at encyclopedias or general books that are gonna kind of uh, give us that broad overview of a topic. Uh, again, always with the eye that, you know, that's not the end of our um, searching. That's really just the start. And we're going to use what we find there to sort of build on that and um, uh, narrow down the focus of our search so that we can find things that are really uh, precisely valuable and interesting to, to what we're looking for. Um, so we're going to start kind of expanding on that now by uh, using a couple of different approaches to searching. One uh, that's really uh, uh, very common mainstream approach using keywords uh, to develop um, a, a search and, and find sources. And another one that's maybe a little less well-known that um, hopefully will um, help you to uh, have some options when you're trying out um, different searches and trying to find stuff in the library. So uh, let's go ahead with that. I'm going to share um, my browser um, so we can have a look at where we're at. <clears throat> so uh, what I started with... Um, uh, from last time, I wasn't using this exact topic, um, but this is something that I became interested in the past couple of days, um, looking at sort of the psychology of cats, and in particular domestic uh, cats, pet, pet cats. I have a, a pet cat at home um, that, you know, sometimes behaves in a way that seems uh, seems normal, and then other times seems very strange and um unusual. So um, that kind of got me thinking, you know, maybe I would like to learn a little bit more about the psychology of cats, how their brains work, how they sort of see the world. Um, and so that, uh, like we talked about last time, that's a very sort of uh, broadly focused um, kind of topic area. It's not a specific topic. You wouldn't want to try and write uh, a short research paper um, about the psychology of cats generally. Um, that would be much too broad. Um, and you wouldn't really be able to focus on anything in, in, a, in a very meaningful way. Um, so you'd be left with kind of this, this really broad strokes um, kind of paper that, di that didn't really hit on any of the particular topics that you would want. So again, you know, this is starting from a, a really broad perspective and trying to help us narrow down. So I'm kind of restating some of the stuff that we did yesterday, but it's important to kind of build out uh, from there. So I found this book here about a canine and feline behavior for veterinary technicians and nurses. Um, I more or less chose this one randomly. I, you know, I, I just glanced at a couple of the different options here. Um, that I found under cats uh, psycholog or you know, that's going to capture psychology, psychological, um, that kind of thing. Um, and so I, you know, I chose this one, I opened the book. Um, and what I did was, um, you know, the, the other day, my son was playing with a little sort of laser toy thing. And the cat was chasing it around and kind of, it seemed as though the cat was really uh, sort of ambitiously hunting this laser. Um, I think we've all seen videos or maybe even done it in person, um, had a, a cat chase a light or something like that. Um, and it was just interesting to me. So I, I kind of thought, well, okay, maybe hunting is um, sort of a theme that I could uh, uh, jump onto at first as something to kind of narrow things down. So I, I could search within this uh, ebook uh, for the word hunt. And I'd actually found eight results of the word hunt. Um, and it shows me here in this system, it shows me where it, it found those results. So there's one, there's three results on page 38. And um, that's in the section on canine behavior. So that's both dogs. Um, so I can kind of ignore those ones. But uh, there was four results on uh, page 61. Um, and two results on page 62. So it seems like there's kind of a, a little section and a couple different pages where it talks about hunting. Um, so when I click there, it, it shows me, you know, where it found those words. There's a, a section here um, called ingestive and predatory behavior. And it just is very, very short. 
um, but it talks about the sort of uh, behavior and habits of hunting and um, you know hunting prey uh, that would be found in in cats. Um, and there's some discussion of the differences between domesticated uh, versus uh, feral cats, which was you know could be an interesting distinction for me. Um, there's some information about how cats are trained by uh, their mothers to hunt for prey and how they're sort of um, how that's demonstrated to them and how they learn that. Um, so that's a little bit interesting as well. Um, so there's that section. And then on the following page, page 62, <clears throat> there's um, a section on exploratory behavior and activity levels. And that one's interesting for me in the kind of uh, early uh, stages of, of my research, thinking about my cat in particular, chasing a laser around on the floor, um, you know, thinking about sort of activities and sort of, uh, I guess, structured kind of physical activity for my cat, who's um, at least these days certainly is stuck indoors. Um, so, uh, so this is interesting as well, kind of talking about the different levels of activity um, and the things that will help uh, a cat to feel less stressed out by being cooped up in a home and not doing some of these natural instinctual things that they usually do. Um, so anyway, this was a book that I found that helps me to kind of turn that just that tiny little idea that like, oh, my cat, even though um, he doesn't need to hunt, he's fed by me regularly, um, that he still has this sort of it seems like he has this need to chase a laser around or like, you know, run around acting like he's hunting for something. So um, this sheds a little bit of light on that. It also um, gives me some words and some things to sort of integrate into my searches um, that'll help me to pinpoint the, the resources, the different articles and other books and things that are going to touch on, on this topic. Um, so it's out of that that we can start to build um, a search, uh, a, key, a, simp a very simple keyword search. And so I've done this already, but what I wanted to do um, was kind of show you uh, how, how I kind of develop these searches. I'm going to do that with a whiteboard here. I'm not, I don't use this very often, but I wanted to give this a shot just to see if I could. Um, so uh, here, I'm going to just draw on the whiteboard and use a really thick marker. So, um, <clears throat> So what we have then is this idea that we're looking for information about how um, cats hunt for prey. All right, so um, that that's two sort of concepts that we're looking for. We're looking for cats. I'm trying to write carefully here because um, it's a little bit hard to do this digitally. Um, so there's uh, there's this concept of cats, of course, that we're looking for. And then there's this idea of hunt. So cats on the hunt. All right, so these are the two major sort of concepts I'm looking for. They're not synonyms for one another. They don't, they only relate in the sense that um, there might be some sources that talk about how cats hunt, but we wouldn't use these interchangeably. So they're two separate concepts. Um, you could add to this as well. You could add, say, like what I had before, the, the term psychology. Um, you could do that as well. Um, and that might even uh, branch out into other sort of subtopics and things that, that you might uh, look for and examine. Um, so that's... Uh, that's an option. You can always do more. You can always integrate other concepts. Um, but definitely, you know, when you have a question or you have sort of a broad uh, topic area, you're going to want to break it apart into sort of its components, right? Um, so here we have cats and hunt. Now, the next step to, to building a search is to think about related concepts or synonyms even, um, other words that might be used in place of each of these things. So um, it could be that um, an author, somebody who's writing an article or a book, will write about cats. Um, they may also, you know, write about felines. Um, so that's something that we could um, in potentially integrate into the search. There's also um, a scientific um, term, I believe is felis catus. 
<clears throat> so that phrase is sort of the Latin um, scientific term for domesticated, like a house cat. Um, and that this I found when I was just doing a few preliminary searches, I found that this cropped up a fair bit in the um, sources that were talking about, you know, specifically domesticated cats. When I when I was doing some searches generally for cats, um, there was also results coming back for like big cats, like a lynx or, a, you know, um, that kind of thing. So, um, you know, and that's not really something that I'm tremendously interested in. I'm mostly interested in cats that are like my cat that I have at home. Um, so um, including this could be could be useful as well to just be nice and specific. Um, so for that, you know, maybe there's more, but that's kind of the, the ones that I had thought of. You could also um, make each of them more specific. You could say domesticated cats or house cats, that kind of thing. So you, there's options there for kind of how you bring that together. Um, now for hunt, we can do a similar thing, right? So we can include some of the other words that we saw even in the um, in the the general um, book that we were looking at earlier. So um, you know, under uh, hunt, we could include prey. We could include predation. Oops. Or predatory. Be a term that's used. Um, <clears throat> and so, you know, all that does is it sort of it integrates other um, sort of alternative terminology that might show up in the titles and the descriptions of books and articles that sort of mean the thing that we're trying to say, right? So, um, you know, if an author doesn't specifically talk about hunting as, as an activity, but they talk about sort of how uh, cats approach prey or how they have sort of predatory instincts, that kind of thing, um, then we have some words here to represent that in different ways and, and bring back some of those results that uh, maybe don't use specifically the word hunt, right? So that's what we're trying to do here is trying to kind of branch out this, um, this concept in such a way that we kind of capture some other things that maybe don't use the exact terms that we started with, but are still potentially very useful. So what, then how we can put this all together into a, a sort of final search is to separate um, all of these synonyms with the search command or. And so or written as OR, let me try and write this out in a way that looks clear. Um, this, uh, what it tells the search system is that these are sort of interchangeable terms. I'm running out of space here, but um, so, um, you know, whether it's basically conveying to the search that what, you know, whether you find the word hunt or prey or predation or predatory, just find the, um, you know, bring back any results that mention one or the other of those terms. Okay. And the way we dis make it distinct from the other concept is by putting it in parentheses. Okay. There's a couple of other things that we need to do here. Um, this phrase, these two words, we need to join them together in quotation marks. So that's going to be a phrase search. I'm going to look for these two words side by side. Um, and uh, we might want to add um, the sort of wild card um, search, which is an asterisk, um, to uh, to the ends of some of these terms. So hunt or hunting or hunter, right? All of those sort of um, versions of that word would be useful. So the asterisk just says, you know, find hunt plus anything else, a word that begins with H-U-N-T um, and then, um, you know, any kind of ending on that, just bring back the, those words. So, um, so that, you know, that can be a useful way of kind of expanding on things as well. And uh, one thing that you can add, it's not essential, but in between your major concepts, so in between these um, these two sort of concepts that are uh, separated by um, parentheses, yeah, you can use the word and, and and is sort of the automatic search command. So if you don't say anything, it'll search as an and. But basically what that means, having that between these two, is that um, you, know, you need to find some version of this concept and some version of this concept. So whether it's um, an article that talks about how cats hunt, 
great, that, that will show up in the results. Um, or it could be, you know, how felines um, engage in predatory behavior, right? So um, a mention of that, those types of words together um, will, will also show up in our results. So it's basically saying, you know, any of these is an alternative here, cats or felis catus or um, felines, you know, th those all mean the same thing for me. Um, so, you know, any one of those um, with any one of these. So, um, so any combination of these two concepts, but it doesn't matter which, which one is used. So anyway, I hope that that's clear that we have other information on the website if, it, if that's a little confusing, um, but that's, that's kind of how this goes together. Um, there are also other uh, search commands that you can use depending on the database and the search interface. Um, a common one that you can use uh, to sort of uh, get rid of some misunderstandings is the search command not. And basically what not does is it says, um, you know, do this search and then anything that mentions like this other term, right? So if I wanted to say, get rid of all the all the stuff about canines, um, then I could say not canine, and it would just you know any results that also uh, mention the word canine would be um, removed from my search. So you know that is an option. It's not one that I use all the time, um, and sometimes can uh, actually uh, make your search results less good. So you have to be a little careful with it. But it is an option. Like if you're getting a lot of results that are mentioning some other thing that you don't want, you can use not, and it'll just get rid of it for you. Um, so that's kind of, that's how you can put a search together. You know, this is one way. It's not the only way that we can search for this topic. Um, another researcher might have different words in mind. They might, you know, do potentially a better job of thinking of different synonyms or different angles at hunting and, and predatory behavior or whatever, have, have a different set of words that they would use. But this is how you can put together sort of a, a combination search where it searches for different versions of the concepts that you want. Um, so hopefully that's really useful. You can turn this example into um, good searches for uh, the types of things that you're actually, uh, actually searching for. So I'm going to um, close this whiteboard and then go back to sharing my screen. Um, so here we're, we're still in this. The search that I had done earlier um, was a, a version of this. So cats or felines and hunt or play or prey or predation. And that was the one that I kind of developed earlier. And so you can see that what this looks like when it's written out in the search box. I have each of my concepts here enclosed in parentheses. Um, but uh, I'm using synonyms or sort of related concepts or alternative concepts um, for each of each of these to kind of expand my search a little bit. So not every result that I got was great, but I could scroll through it and I could kind of see um, it, you know, it highlights where the words are found. So it kind of shows you uh, more or less why that result turned up in your in your search. And so, you know, here's something just um, you know, about um, domestic cats that capture and bring home wild animal prey. It's kind of a, a classic uh, cat behavior as well, um, where they'll catch a mouse or something or a bird and they'll bring it inside the house. Um, so uh, my cat hasn't, I don't think he's done that, but my last cat did do that. Um, so anyway, it's that's one example, I guess, of a, a source that maybe touches on certain behaviors associated with hunting, um, and, uh, you know, hunting for prey, um, and a specific type of behavior where they actually capture and, and bring the animal home. Um, so, so there's an example of, of one that we found. Um, as always, when there's this view full text, you can click to open it. Uh, here we have it in a couple of different databases, so you can choose uh, the one that you want. Um, and there's the actual PDF of this article. Right, so... Um, you know, we would have to read the abstract and kind of go through this. We'll have other sessions about kind of looking at academic articles and um, making decisions on the basis of kind of how, how we can quickly evaluate and kind of read the, the contents of an article. Um, so that's for, for a future session. Um, but this is kind of how you can work with a, a topic and turn it into a source, um, which is uh, which is great. So hopefully that's useful. Now, the, this, the next approach I think that can be very useful is um, to 
uh, to examine the, these topics. So using a keyword search, but doing it in a very sort of um, specific and narrowly focused place. Um, so this search that we've done here, um, this search is across the, a lot of the library's major collections. So we're finding stuff from, from everywhere. Right, um, all of the subscriptions that we have to different databases, there, you know, most of them are being included in the results set that we see here. Right, so we do get a lot of results, seventy six thousand eight hundred results in libraries worldwide. Um, so you know, that's a lot to manage. You start to wonder if maybe like buried down on the, you know, fiftieth page of uh, this result set is a really good source, and it, so it's hard to sort of imagine that we're, you know, it's impossible for us to to consider or consult all of these sources. So it can be a little bit um, too broadly focused, I guess, for us. Um, but one thing we can do is we can take any um, any journal that we, we found here, we can actually search that journal individually. This is an approach that I really like, um, especially if you find a, a, a specific journal that you like a lot or that you feel like there's, it seems like there's a lot of articles that pop up related to your topic um, in that journal. Um, what you can do is actually just, you know, copy or just, you know, remember the, the title of this article. I'm gonna command C so I have it um, saved. And then if you go to the library's homepage again, I'm just click on journals here. Um, you can search for that journal title. So I chose this time Applied Animal Behavior Science is the name of the journal, right? So when you search for it, it shows you, okay, the library does subscribe to this journal. Uh, we have it in a couple of different databases, Science Direct and Elsevier. You can choose one or the other of those. Um, and it shows you the, the range of years that we have. So nine, 1995 to present is uh, what we have in both. So, um, so they're both pretty pretty much equal. Um, now, if you click on the title of any one of these, it's going to open up that database um, to this journal. <clears throat> and there will often be an option to search in this journal. Um, depending on the database, it'll be on a different part of the screen. So you have to kind of look around. And sometimes there'll be a little drop down menu where you can either search the entire database or search this title, which means search this journal. Right. So here we can uh, now we can do a, a similar search um, cats and hunt uh, or sorry, I got to do my my parentheses um, hunt or prey or predation. Right. Whatever uh, version of your search you want to do. Oh. It says it can't be run. Oh, wild cards are not supported. OK, so. Um, in, that's what it's saying is that we can't use that um, asterisk. So let's try hunt or hunting um, or uh, hunter. We have to kind of do that work for us. Um, so, so there now, instead of getting, you know, thousands, tens of thousands of uh, results here, we're getting, you know, only places within this journal um, this specific journal where we found uh, something about hunting and cats, right? Um, so here's this actually this article that we found already about the capture and capturing and bringing home wild animal prey. Um, there's another research article about hunting behavior and prey specialization in house cats. Um, I guess there's a bird be safe collar um, that they're assessing whether that works. Um, predation, deterrence, that kind of thing. Um, so, you know, this is this is giving us a whole bunch of other articles all within this one journal um, that are about our topic. And so what's nice about it is, you know, we're only, it's limited, we're only searching one, one journal. Um, but we do know that every uh, source that we find here, because it's from this journal, if we trust that this is a good journal, then we can trust that these are pretty good sources. Um, so that's that's something that's helpful. Um, it, and it also, because it's more focused and less kind of broad, we're getting this these fewer results, right? So 353 results is still a lot, um, but it's much more manageable to sort of think that, you know, maybe if we add some more specific kind of elements to this search, we could narrow it down a little bit, 
Um, or maybe we could sort it in a way that, you know, if we just look at the past few years, maybe we'll get, you know, that the, the uh, half dozen or so, you know, really recent, really good articles from this journal about cats and their hunting behavior. So um, these kind of limits that they're a little bit artificial, right? We kind of impose them on ourselves, but they help to uh, not be overwhelmed by just, you know, tens of thousands of sources and not really knowing how to pick and choose amongst them. This we know, you know, applied animal behavior science, it seems like a pretty good journal. And within it, there's these articles that are about my topic. So um, that's another approach that I use a lot. I, I like it. Um, it means, you know, sometimes you have to uh, pick and choose a few different journals. Um, you don't want to use, you know, only sources from one journal. Um, so you might want to try, you know, a small handful of different journals using this same approach. Um, but it's a way that you can kind of narrow the focus of your search so that you're not kind of um, blown away by the, the, you know, getting so many results and not knowing what to do with it. Um, so that was kind of what I wanted to cover today. This is going to lead into um, some other discussions tomorrow. We have a session about citation searching, um, and that's a, a whole other approach um, that I think is really valuable and useful. Um, so feel free to check in on that one. And um, then we're going to move into assessing and looking at academic articles and eventually talking about using the articles that we find um, in our papers and how to cite and reference them appropriately. Um, so I hope that that was helpful and um, good luck.